I have a very fun video for you right now because I'm standing next to a pretty cool 1982 Dodge Ram 150. I think it has a lot of character, but it's not just about the old truck, it's also about the new. This is old versus new, and I want to show you what 40 years of truck technology can do. 1982 versus 2022. So let me show you both trucks and then take them for a drive. As far as trucks are concerned, things were a lot more simple in 1982 than they are now. Uh, because here you're looking at the very typical light duty full-size truck from that era. You got a two-door regular cab. You've got a giant eight-foot bed for utility. And this happens to be a two-wheel drive. I'll tell you about price, etc. later in the video. But you will be probably surprised to find out how much this truck weighs. It's way under 4,000 pounds at the curb weight. It's basically like a current compact car <laughs> as far as weight. It can still carry over 1,000 pounds. Um, and it's powered by a straight six, slant six gasoline engine. But let me just give you a glimpse of uh, what I brought for the new truck. This video would not be possible without our friends at Johnson Auto Plaza because I went there and I said I would like a truck, kind of a simple brand new Ram 1500 for an old versus new comparison. And I don't want it fancy. And uh, this was kind of the most affordable and the simplest truck they had currently on their lot. This is a brand new 2022 model. It's a quad cab, which means it's got a shorter second set of doors so it's not a full crew cab with a gigantic space in the back seat and it's a, a bit of a shorter bed as well um, this is i would call this the current sporty work truck because of course it has a lot of other features and options it also has a v8 uh, but it basically has a six foot four inch uh, bed on it well let's look at the engines actually and see how they compare Oh yeah, look at this giant steel hood. You go in here, there's a little latch, and then you lift it to unveil this. This was more of a base power plant. Uh, they call it the Slant 6. It is a straight 6, but as you can see, it's kind of mounted at an angle inside the engine base, hence the Slant. This is a 3.7 liter gasoline engine and it's made it to a four-speed manual transmission they don't make trucks like this anymore of course um, power levels get ready for this 95 horsepower was one of the ratings with a single barrel carburetor also depending on the tune or the year the model year um, you could get a little bit more power out of these engines but these were not racing vehicles or fast vehicles by any stretch of the imagination um, but that's why I want to take you on a ride with me. So let's go drive. All right, let me give you a quick tour of the inside. Uh, look at the steering wheel and the manual transmission shifter. Uh, we did not do this. This is the way the truck was purchased. Um, so maybe it was in the middle of a transformation. I'm guessing it was going to be a little sporty street truck of some sort. Um, actually, the steering wheel has a good feeling. Um, in my hands and it's relatively small um, this does have power steering so this should not be a big deal um, I have a four speed so reverse is actually all the way over and up and um, then the first second third and fourth so four speed right there the clutch is relatively light so it doesn't feel like a big big burly truck so that's pretty nice I have my parking brake release down here so I can release that um, simple key has the Chrysler star so let me start this up so this engine um, it is a straight six and I'm not sure let me know in the comments below did this come with three-point belts originally 
I think so. That's pretty neat. So look at my tape deck. This is high end. This is the Royale, the Royal truck. Uh, manual windows. The passenger window doesn't work for some reason, but we'll fix that. We'll take care of it. Uh, our plan includes uh, fixing this truck up a little bit and uh, maybe you do some new trim, maybe build out the back, maybe with a topper and so it can go to a new home. There is some sort of a rattle. I think it's the glove box. It's the Royal glove box that's rattling. So I'm on a dirt road. I'm going to get onto pavement. Let me see. You know what? This truck is relatively easy to drive. It has good, seems to be a good gearing for taking off. The second, no problem, no grinding whatsoever. Third, oh, beauty. I don't have a tachometer, so I'm just guessing at my RPM, but um, yeah, 61,000 miles. I was a little bit wrong with, earlier when I said 63. We believe this is original miles and the interior looks kind of nice. So I kind of believe that this was low miles vehicle. But you know what? I mean, from the outside, it looks kind of boxy and very simple and you would be kind of maybe a little bit intimidated to drive it, but I don't think you should be. Actually, it's relatively easy to drive. Um, I'm not carrying any load. Uh, but I think it could be a really great cruiser, parts runner. It's not really an all-weather truck, unless you put a lot of weight in the back, because it is a two-wheel drive. And actually, believe it or not, fuel efficiency was very important in the early 80s, because, of course, of the gas crisis in the late 70s. Uh, that's why small displacement engines were around, engines like this, a 3.7 liter. And Ram, Dodge Ram was quoting in brochures 30 MPG or sometimes even higher for some of their truck models. So that's really impressive back 40 years ago. And that's why is that? Well, because these are lightweight vehicles. Obviously, there's no airbags here. There's no trailer brake controllers, large screens, computers and satellites. Uh, everything is quite simple. That's why they're lightweight. And of course, they don't have all this latest safety equipment that current trucks do. Only one mirror, only on, on my driver's side. So this is what it was like 40 years ago. Well, not with a steering wheel, <laughs> but actually it's more comfortable and easier to drive than I ever expected it to be. So this is what rattles. So let me see if I can open it. Oh, yeah, so that solves the rattle, but look at this. Oh, this is pretty nice. Dodge trucks operating instructions, 150, 350. This is pretty sweet. This looks original. Or maybe it was purchased, you know, after the fact, but it's with the truck still. This is neat. Radio, 8-track. Oh, look at the stereo cassette tape player. This is, this is what we have. We have the premium system. Ah, uh, yeah, and this is where 40 years of progress has taken us. Underneath this very lightweight hood that just opens by itself um, is a beauty of an engine. I really love this one. 5.7 liter Hemi. It's been in this truck for many, many, many years um, in a very similar tune. Uh, 395 horsepower. Um, this is great. Um, and they're not changing it, at least anytime soon. Um, and state of the art for the current uh, truck is of course well this has an eight-speed automatic but it also is has the sport appearance but appearance comes later let's take it for a drive and let's hear this hemi 
All right, let's check out the modern era, the 2022 interior. Um, this is an all new generation of truck. Of course, it came out about three years ago for 2019. Um, new interior design. This is a Bighorn uh, Lone Star. And then of course it has the night edition. So yeah, it's not just a basic truck, like I was saying, but still cloth seats. Uh, this is the big horn part of it. Giant center console. So this is no longer three across seating here in the front. Of course, forget about manual transmissions. Uh, they're gone, but really clever front console. Then, let me get in. Here's my 8-speed automatic transmission control. I have cruise control over here. Um, the other truck, of course, doesn't have cruise control. My gear selector as well. And I'll show you the rest in a second, but I want to show you the space in the back seat. So this is me sitting comfortably. Let's check out the room in the back. Let's see what the quad cab is all about. Oh, yeah. So it's a bit tighter than I expected. I'm, I'm kind of, this is the seat where I would have it. I'm over 6'2". My knees are hitting a bit I have decent headroom and I feel a little bit upright, so the seat is not fully reclined. Uh, but this is, you know, standard across currently all the big uh, full-size manufacturers. They do offer this kind of extended cab with four doors option. I still have a lot of features here. I have my own vents, my cup holders, my USB ports, my power, 115 volt power. So I have a lot of still a lot a lot of features here but the space is limited of course all my screens are here let me quiet down the climate control system so this is still not fully automatic system I have the fan control, I have my temperature controls. I do have heated seats though and heated steering wheel uh, as part of this truck. And really what happened over the last 40 years is that pickup trucks um, turned from utility working vehicles into everyday family vehicles as well. They become really popular. The amount of just overall usefulness of a pickup truck I think became attractive to a variety of people and because of this there was this need to make these trucks more luxurious more feature rich more safe more quiet um, this truck like i told you uh, has what four times the horsepower of the other old truck four times the horsepower um let's open it up Oh yeah, it's it, the traction control system is not letting me use all of it. And look, I can just I can just whisper to you and uh, talk to you on a really calm level. Um, there's nothing rattling. Uh, yes, I know. Forty years, any any vehicle after forty years will have rattles. Um, this is a brand new vehicle, but but still, the amount of insulation and isolation that in a new truck that the new truck has over older vehicles is pretty dramatic. Um, fuel efficiency, uh, the, the ratings, uh, the ratings really are 21 on a highway for this four wheel drive model. Uh, this is a brand new model. You can see this uh, 15.7 MPG is what I've been getting today, idling and driving and mixed driving. So don't judge it by that quite yet because this is not broken in and I haven't been running on the highway with this. Um, but yeah, the trucks got heavier. I do have a full suite of uh, driver tech uh, assistance technologies here. I do not have adaptive cruise though. Um, that's one feature that's not available. Now I'm in the paved road. It got even quieter. I can put my foot down. Yeah, and I can accelerate to uh, pretty great speeds at ease and it's very comfortable but you know what the old truck with its kind of worn out suspension wasn't much worse than this as far as kind of road comfort there was a lot of play in that steering wheel 
this is much more thought experience as far as driving experience. So yes, um, thinking about price also, I'll tell you price just in a couple of minutes, but this truck basically costs about 11 times more than a market value of that old truck. Um, yes, pricing is going crazy, but partially it's because these pickups became everyday family machines. Here's another thing I noticed after driving both trucks back to back. This is, now we take this for granted, the backup camera, but it made me feel more comfortable and confident in what I was doing. Because I was um, driving here, I was turning around, and I was trying to show both trucks to you. But in the old one, I felt a little bit nervous because I didn't have a lot of vi uh, visibility towards the back. I only had one tiny mirror. Um, here I have both sides, I can see clearly, and I have the camera. So I think new trucks are, because of that, more approachable. And that's why I think they're popular, because they're very capable, and yet they're easier to operate. The other thing that changed in 40 years, not one, but two glove boxes. Although, uh, no owner's manual right now. I think you can either ask for one at the dealership, um, or you can also access it online and through the latest systems as well. Sometimes um, you have access to a lot of the information here, especially in your Uconnect 5 system, for example. Let's talk about more truck stuff. Oh, yes. <laughs> of course, there's no damped uh, tailgate, but this is, look at the condition of this truck. I mean, yes, it has been used. It's kind of a low miles. Uh, we think it's about, well, the, the odometer shows just about 63,000 miles, and I believe it. Um, and this truck, this type of truck was used mostly for carrying payloads. What is the payload rating? Well, that's very kind of difficult to find exactly. Um, I could put this truck on the scales, at a certified scale, and give you a little bit better idea. But I think it's just about 1,500 pounds, which is um, comparable to the current truck. So as far as payload is concerned, old trucks were just as capable as new ones. This one does not have a hitch. Um, it does have this interesting twin exhaust system, dual exhaust system. I don't think this is original. Let me know in the comments below uh, what you think about this. The bumper looks very uh, macho and also has a place for um, a ball to be mounted for a little bit of towing. But I wouldn't recommend towing a heck of a lot with this truck. Maybe three, four thousand pounds ish. Um, it will do that, but the engine is not very powerful and the chassis and the brakes are not very powerful either. All right, let's take a look at the new tech. First of all, this big horn addition, which is a step above the tradesman work truck for Ram, has a nice tailgate, but no bed liner. That's a bit of an extra thing that you can do later. And payload is about 1,840 pounds. So approximate payload, old versus new, like I said, it's about the same. Towing? Well, this puppy can tow a lot. It depends on the rear axle ratio. A 321 uh, gear rear differential uh, will allow you to tow about 7, 7,500 pounds. And a 392 rear end will allow you to tow about 11,000 pounds. So as far as capability for towing, New trucks are king, of course, especially in this half-ton territory. Actually, this half-ton can tow probably more than a heavy-duty truck from that 80s era. Here's the payload, like I told you before, and now modern trucks, of course, have these new payload stickers. Uh, these were not available in the 82 era. Uh, the gross vehicle weight rating on this one is 7,100 pounds. So this truck really weighs about 5,300 pounds, way more than that old truck. But of course, it has four-wheel drive, a big V8, more capability, more features, more safety, and etc. cetera. Uh, let's talk about style. This is when the Dodge Ram was still the Dodge Ram. You can see it right here. And I love the squared off styling, especially with the big headlights and a little bit of chrome. Not too much. I'm not a huge fan of chrome, but I think it works on this design. Really squared off, really in your face. Yeah, I know that um, 90s design where the hood and the fender drop down. Um, is also very, very popular, but I appreciate this generation a lot. 
Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you a fan of this? Uh, yes, this is the time when trucks rode on 15 inch steel wheels, steelies. In this case, it has this chrome ring around it, five bolt pattern. This is not a very heavy duty suspension, so it does not need to be a six bolt or an eight bolt. Gross vehicle weight rating on this is 4,800 pounds. I cannot believe that number still. Um, but yeah, pretty simple. I think it's missing a hubcap, so we may have to dress this up a little bit. And if you want to see more of this truck, check out TFL Classics channel. This is where we do all of the old metal right there. And this truck is actually going to be auctioned off at specialty auto auctions in Greeley, Colorado. They're sponsoring a video series with this truck on TFL Classics channel. And check it out, September 10th, you can bid on this truck and we're going to dress it up a little bit, make it a little bit nicer. Um, and uh, you can also sell your vehicle at that auction as well. Now let's take a look at the new style. Obviously, this is very popular, blacked out everything. This is the night edition package. It's just over $2,000 in the case of this truck for 2022. Uh, and you can tell a little bit of design similarity, large, large headlights, a little bit of a step in the hood and uh, body matched uh, bumper. Actually, I kind of like this design, but I would not get my wheels painted black. Um, I'll show you that in a second. But this truck also has active aero. Uh, we showed you that before at high speed. There's an extra chin spoiler that comes down and makes this truck more dynamic for fuel efficiency. So, yes, in 40 years, we went from a chrome bumpers to active aerodynamics on our pickup trucks. This is what I'm talking about. Um, blacked out 20 inch wheels. We have Dueler Bridgestone tires. These are the HLs. This is a 275-55R20. I'm okay with a 20 inch wheel. I would get it in um, maybe in polished silver or another color, maybe with some accents. Um, and if you want to take this truck more for the off-road use case, I would not get a 20, I would get an 18 and get a little bit more tire on this truck. But I think overall, especially with the white letters as an accent um, for a sport package here, I think it works really well. So there you have it, 40 years of progress. This truck, market value, it depends on the region of, your, of the country, of course, but it's just about under 5,000 bucks for a Dodge Ram like this. Over here, I told you I got the most affordable truck I could on short notice. Uh, this price, sticker price is 55,000 bucks. Almost 11 times more expensive. Yes, but it's brand new. It's got a big Hemi and it can tow a heck of a lot. So let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, thank you for joining me and check out oldtfl.com for everything automotive in one place right there.